Hello and welcome to Kogin Focus, the program that beams such light on activities around the three central districts of Kogi, Nigeria's confluent state. I'm Uluwatosin Osuji. Welcome. In today's edition, seven day ultimatum given to tra traditional rulers, local government administrators, and state security advisor to quell all unrest in the state. Kogi Governor Bailo swears in Grand Kadi of Sharia Court of Appeal. Monarchs, youths, market women, and farmers throw support behind Governor Bailo's second term bid. And when we hit the streets, we shall hear what the people expect from the much touted next level government of Muhammad Buhari. These are many more when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. National and State Assembly members of Kogi State elected during this year's general elections have passed votes of confidence on Governor Yaya Bailu. The present speaker of the State of, the State of Assembly, Matthew Kolawole, who briefed journalists in Lokoja, said the resounding success of the party in the state during the 2019 general elections was as a result of the purposeful leadership of Governor Yaya Bailu. We have read in the national dailies and online platforms recently many rumors of sort just to create animosity between the government and the people of the state. Hence, there is need to add our voice. All politics is local, and the various constituency which we represent are closest to the people at the grassroots. We therefore, in the best position to inform the media, it is pertinent to know that the governor that delivered two senatorial seats out of three seven House of Representative seats out of nine, and 25 over 25 seats in the Kogi State House of Assembly is the true leader that really loves the progress of the party. There is no reason he will not be given the party's ticket. He said the new direction administration of Yaya Bailo has achieved a lot in the area of security, education, infrastructure development, civil service reforms, and human capital development. We therefore call on all and sundry to rally around the current administration in the state, irrespective of political affiliation, to succeed for the benefit of all. We wish to assure the national leadership of our party, ably led by their excellencies, President Muhammad Dubuari and Comrade Adam Sushomole, that Kogi State APC is not in any rancor whatsoever. Those who run to the National Secretariat with stories to the contrary are persons who are not known to the APC in Kogi State as a member or stakeholder. They are spoilers enlisted to do dirty deals of the opponents. The speaker said this support will manifest again during the governorship election in November when he expects Governor Bailo to be re-elected with a light slide margin. There is no gain saying that the current new direction administration led by Al Hadi Yaya Bilu has achieved a lot in the area of security, education, infrastructural development, civil service reforms, and human capital development, ETC. Hence, there is need for him to consolidate. It is therefore based on the aforementioned reasons we, the APC National and State House of Assembly, Members elect from Kogi State unanimously endorse Governor Yaya Bello for a second term in office. The elected lawmakers took a swipe at persons spreading rumors of the All Progressive Congress in the state being, a dis being in disarray, saying nothing could be further from the truth. A groundswell of support has trailed declaration of a second term bid by Kogi State Governor Yaya Bailu, as traditional rulers, market women, youths, members of the religious bodies, and other groups across the three senatorial zones districts converge on the state capital, Lokoja, over the last few days to throw their weight behind Governor Bailu's re election ambition. Governor Bailu, in turn, assured them of his continued efforts to make Kogi State a better place with each passing day as long as he remains the state's chief executive. 
the Yabelos administration and endorsed the governor for his second term in office. Traditional ruler from the state central, west and the east senatorial district were present during the three-day gathering. They say Yabelo has done creditably well, governing in a way different to what had been witnessed in the past. There was water everywhere, but not to, not to drink. It didn't take long. The water project is ongoing. The first time for this democracy that is 20 years old, for the first time, Kaba produced the Speaker of the House of Assembly. For the first time. Coming to health, we are now even begging our people to go to the general hospital in Kaba. Because I was reliably informed that 18 million naira worth of drugs were deposited in Kaba for our use. So we are most grateful. We are in solidarity with your creation. We are in solidarity with this government. And we are in solidarity with the good people of uh, Kogi State. We stay in the south, in the north, and want to find out what is happening or want to make a comment about the happenings in Kogi State. It will be apt for them to come here and find out by, by fact of verification. So he has uh, spent the, the past four years trying to see what he can do to move Kogi forward. And I think it's just apt for us to give him the other four years for him to perfect what he has already started. As you're coming to be a governor here, it's a divine from old much Allah. And you are not here to victimize any tribe. God will see you through the next level. Peace is done and restored in Basaloka government. Today we are proud of you and we are praying so all the sons of daughters that you, nothing worth come me, we are going to stand behind you solemnly to vote for you and bring you back to the way and does you. And our local government face have been in the dust for years. You solemnly cleanse the dust. May God reward you. Humanly and infrastructurally, you have done much. May God give you the agility, the ability to do much for these great people. We are looking forward to show our much needed appreciation by you by not doing anything, but by praying and committing ourselves to the best of our ability to bring you back to Lugard Hall. Some of them also believe that there's a lot more to be done. We know that when an elder beats a younger person, Time will come when he will draw the younger person close to himself. Your Excellency, please, even if it's like our son's trade, as he retraces his step, please draw him closer. That is a very fervent appeal from me by the people. So, whatever the divergent views, differences, and whatever levels, and whatever dimensions, I am sincerely advised that we should not shy away from that or continuous that. Former lawmakers, defected members from other parties also scored Governor Bailey's administration high. Another reason for endorsing Your Excellency is the appointments of our indigenous into various positions at the state local and federal level and on equitable basis is not lopsided. Thank you, Your Excellency. The Moribond Primary Healthcare Center in Jegubeki that you have renovated and upgraded is functioning very well. Thank you. To such an extent that it's serving free services to pregnant women how Kogi State used to be, and uh, now I can see a lot of your children, <laughs> seriously. Your Excellency, God bless you. Sincerely speaking, um, Ida Road, Anka, those other kidnappers, a lot of antisocial activities have been going on there, but now I think those things are all, we're not finding them anymore. They robbed the thing from Ejule to Ida, the traditional headquarters of Idala was done last by Oni and Son in 1973. But today the road is growing gradually with asphalt overlay. This is the color agenda. 
committee members we didn't have any amongst them but today a legal woman courtesy of your work is leading the whole women folk in APC and he is one of the cardinal members and the front runners in the secretariat of APC today the special advisor to the governor on local government and chieftaincy affairs Abubakar O'Hare who reacted to journalists' questions said the meeting was convened by the people to enable them present the scorecard of Governor Bello's performance. From what they have been saying, they are urging him to remain focused, to remain very determined in his pursuit to return back to office for second term, that their support for him is more of a reward for what he has done. Governor Bello promised his own alloyed commitment to make life better for the people if re elected in the November election. Your Royal Highnesses, Your Royal Majesties, I cannot appreciate you well enough. For this show of solidarity and appreciation to God Almighty, we all know that my ascension to power is by the divine mandate of Almighty Allah, not by my power is by the special grace of God. And it is indeed because of that I put God first in everything I do to the good people of Kogi State at large. I want to assure you that moving forward in the conclusion of this first term and by the special grace of God, going into our second term, I'll continue to improve on what we have met on ground, what we are doing, and Kogi State is going to be great. He appealed to the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria to release the bailout balance of 30.8 billion naira to enable him pay outstanding salaries. He advised people to ignore what he called news and misleading rumors about him, being peddled by his destructors, saying all of their schemes are bound to fail. Kogi State's governor, Yaya Belu, has enjoined Muslims Umar to use the holy month of Ramadan to show more love to their neighbors and to pray fervently for sustainable peace unity, and unity of the state and country. In a message to the Muslims, Omar, to mark the commencement of Ramadan fast, which was signed by his chief press secretary, Onugu Muhammad, the governor also urged the well-to-do in the society to show compassion and extend hands of support to the less privileged ones in the spirit of the season, noting that the Holy Month offers another opportunity to all to be fair and just. As one of the five pillars of Islam, Baylor described the month's long fasting as a period of total devotion, spiritual rebirth, and an opportunity for adherents of the faith to reevaluate one's relationship with God. He said Ramadan is a period of fasting and praying Amid at bringing, aimed at bringing about healing, repentance, and renewal while urging the faithful to commit and rededicate themselves to prayers for peace, unity, and progress of Kogi State and Nigeria in general. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bailu has condemned the recent violence in parts of the state that has claimed lives. The governor, who made his feelings known during a security stakeholders meeting in Lokoja, said his administration will not shy away from ensuring safety of lives and property, even as the date for the governorship election in the state draws closer. He gave a seven-day ultimatum to security agents, traditional rulers and affected local government administrators to get all involved. The recent killings in Oga in Kogi West and Ulaja in Dakina Kogi East, with its attendant unrest in those communities, took center stage discussion at the stakeholders' meeting at Government House Lokoja. Fulani has men, farmers, traditional rulers, and security agents were charged with responsibility of securing their communities. 
The full and haste man whose three children were killed said he was on transit from Dekina to Nasarawa State. When at his stop over to continue the journey the following day was surrounded by hoodlums. He said, in addition to losing three children, scores of his cows went missing too. He called the government to ensure justice prevailed. The state security advisor to the governor, Jerry Omodara, commissioner of police, commander Nigeria Army Records, and other security agents said they will not sit back and watch insecurity creep back into the state. They called on persons with useful information on these deadly troublemakers to make it available. On Sunday, 30th May, one man, Mr. Ari Oina, was killed in a bush in Oga, Yaba West, local government. Security agencies commenced investigation immediately to unravel the full enhancements responsible for the killing. I spoke with the high chief in Oga, and the body was removed and is still in the mortuary. However, between Sunday and Monday, that is yesterday, people and communities put law into their hands and killed other people. About 10 bodies have so far been recovered in that area. I'm talking of Omioria, Oga, Odoara, Ejiba, and Evaro, as well as the Kina local government, especially in Luaja. Your Excellency, within days, I can assure you that security agencies are working round the clock. And I can even reveal to you some have just been arrested in the last one hour. The advice I will give everybody is that people should have respect for human life. We are taking the incident as a crime that is being committed and uh, we are investigating. Our job, because we can't be everywhere, we rely on information and intelligence. And when I say information and intelligence, I mean credible information and intelligence. It has to be credible. I must commend the state security advisor. He's always on my neck sending me information, intelligence here and there, and I will dispatch my boys immediately to arrest situations as they come. The one that happened in, uh, where we had this killing in Yagwe, Yagwe, the state administrator is here. My officer went with him. In fact, in my officer recovered the body, the first body before any other person. So who, why would we go to the, to the area? When you, if you are doing, if you do regular community meetings, when the strangers enter your community, when they come into the community, because there is no community that you don't know yourself. When you notice new people in your community, new entrants in your community, there are people, uh, security agencies close to you to report to. So that we can come, take them, profile them, find out where they are coming from, what is their mission and all. If we don't get information, if we don't get intelligence, how? How do we are not clairvoyant? So please, please, and please, give us information. Give us intelligence and watch what will happen. Traditional rulers, heads of farmers, headsmen, and administrators at various levels lend their voices to the discussion. This resolution meeting made by the people of Okadenu made by Ogadenogu on the crisis between Fulanis and Entara Ogadenogu on the 4th May 2019. On the above date, a meeting of Gago youth leaders, Vilate leaders, community leaders and stakeholders were held and the following resolutions were apart. One, the organ, that the Ogadenogu community should coexist with the Fulani Kadori era, raising in the area of the provision of the constitution of Nigeria. Two, that the Fulani should maintain peace while in the area for the business of grazing. Three, that any cow 
that destroyed farm, the owner shall be held responsible. That full and living in Ogadenibu area shall abide by the norms of the area. That any full and in Ogadenibu area should be ready to settle with his wife and family for moral justification. The full and too should know that there are full and among them who are coming in droves. In Kutankarte, I have taken the Ardu and the Okilis to task. And once they notice this kind of movement, they should let us know. If, on the condition that they can guarantee they have good character, we allow them to stay. If they cannot guarantee or stand as different to them, reference to them, we will not allow them to, to settle. And this is what I've been doing, and it has been helping us a lot. But the ones that are carrying arms are the ones who are moving. The ones that are this, causing most of these destructions are the ones who are moving from one street to the other. They cannot say Fulanis are not carrying arms. Fulanis are carrying arms. And it, like I did in my place, I tasked them to search for these bad ones among them. And they, they handle it, and they handle them very well. And that to the security agencies who, who have been on top of this uh, kind of matter. But like the incident in the, around the Obitam, what I want us to note, Your Excellency, is perhaps arrange a special security for that area. Because the major attraction there is the water. They graze and they are looking for where to drink water. Especially now that uh, the rainy season has commenced. So they are always looking for where to drink water. And the, some traditional rulers will allow them places to graze. They will graze and when, I will not tell them where to go and drink water. So when they are taking water from where the, 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 the village is, normally use water for domestic peoples, then crisis actually erupts. But the major problem we have, sir, we are grossly under-policed in open land. I can, probably with the permission of the police commissioner here, in Kababunu, with over 40 different communities, we have less than 50 policemen. And since the problem is Tafara, we now have an influx of strangers. To this that even in some areas in open land, these strangers outnumber our people. So how do you manage yourself when there are 300 people in the community and about 1,000 full of people who have no cattle, who have no defined source of income? So we are suspecting that they are responsible for these skirmishes and some of these kidnappings we have recently, even in Kabatan. Both farmers around the area now at home who have repulsed every now and then of mischief at their farm. I wish to join the administrator in appealing to you, sir, that whatever you can do to strengthen the securities in the area so that the other situation will not recall at the other aspects of from the road to where we're talking about one and a half hours to two hours drive, it would give us a lot of stress, like what the old man said. We needed, like you approved the other time, sir, we needed another army base around there because that area has been recorded. We have recorded another problem sometimes ago within the Yabais, and this is the boundary. Those who came from Nazarawa and Dres who do their dressing, they are the ones that we can't do anything to really tap them. Because we've established a roll call. If you are coming, please get to Hanu. Put down your name so that we will know that we have a visitor. If you are doing anything outside what we what we have in the record, then we can hold you responsible for it. But this particular one is very gruesome, sir.
any henchman that is coming into any community should be ready to drop gun and knife. Secondly, any Fulani henchman that is coming into any community should also be ready to come with his wife and children to settle. Thirdly, any Fulani henchman that will come into any community, the royal fathers and the community leaders and the youth leaders and the local government administrators to please create time to see these people and give them conditions that they can live in peace with those people in those communities. Okay, for instance, where this incident happened, sir, your excellency, I have no police station. Nobody to report to. You know, little, little things can be settled by the uh, police like this. They build uh, a police post, but no manpower. Then we are requesting, there are some critical areas we have observed in local land that are not on the major road, that they need the presence of the army. I must say, that when I reported to the COS, Nigeria Nami, in the barrack, he acted promptly within 24 hours. Those people did disappear. And what they did was, it is a very, it's a border town. They moved to Ekiti State. And I contacted the captain in Ekiti. These people have moved to your area. You know they don't respect uh, international or local or state uh, boundaries. They are there now. Max human being without cows. They will be committing crime, and unfortunately it may be the one with cows, people will uh, do what we call transfer of um, aggression. There is increase in these problems. They will say they can't identify the culprit. It's unfortunate, and we are powerless. For example, cows ate up my eight, eight, eight hectares of bees, seven hectares of maize, and seven hectares of guinecon last December. Also uprooted one hectare of cassava and gave to the cows to eat, unchallenged. Who am I to do the challenge? If I do, I'm ready to lose my life. I reported to the Mithiala directly to the police and the security agents. Nothing could be done about it. I should go and get hold of those uh, cattle rearers. If not, they cannot do anything. And if you get hold of the cattle rearers and you take them to the police station, be ready to abandon that farm. If not, anything can happen to you. These are the situations we are facing, and it's unfortunate. We appreciate the president, uh, Alaji Buhari, and our governor for making efforts for we farmers to, to go on farming. Unfortunately, the boroughs are setting, out, setting us out of those farms. Chief of Staff to the Governor described the recent violence as a sad development. Somebody, some persons, and it is coordinated, the mistake. Because like the Obaro has said and our chief, this is an unusual happening. It has never happened. And once you begin to see an unusual happening, it's not a coincidence, it's not a happenstance. The, sh the sound is sh it's looking like a premeditated activity. And the searchlight of the security agencies need to begin to point at those directions without fear, without favor. It's not politics. We are discussing human lives. I suspect some persons want to give us the painful experience. It would happen. This is Kogi State. Some of you that came to talk here, you spoke extensively from Kogi East farmers. What the HL Tekina said is totally in deviance with what you said. One man, three sons. And you think it's about farm and cow? Governor Gagabelo also voiced his displeasure. For those who think they can take laws into their hands, 
they will surely meet their Waterloo. <laughs> Under my watch, and with the support of sincere and upright traditional rulers, and with the committed efforts of security agencies, we're going to unearth and unravel them. And by the special grace of God, we shall bring them to justice. My ascension to this office is by the special grace of God, Almighty God. Yes, I swore, I held the Quran and I swore by the Constitution that I am going to do justice to all manners of people. I will not be clouded by politics and see life being lost and I will not address it. I will address it head on. And my returning back to this seat after the election in November is in the hand of God Almighty. No human being can determine that. If I'm going to return back here, it is determined by God Almighty already. If I'm not going to return back here, no matter what I do, I will not return. But what happened in between the period that I am saddled with this responsibility? Is what I will account for to the good people of Kogi State and to Almighty Allah. So if you think that you can be anywhere and inside crime or crisis against the innocent people, the citizens of Kogi State, or our visitors, or passers by, I will do everything within my reach to ensure that we all ask you, we'll bring you out, we'll expose you. The various local governments concerned, the administrators, you have seven days to fish out the perpetrators. Else, I'll tell you to be conspirators to those that have killed these people. That's number one. Number two, the immediate traditional rulers of those places of those areas, of these communities where those crimes are committed, you have seven days to turn out those that are linked to these crimes and criminalities. <laughs> so my first security advisor, you must sit on top of the job. You have seven days to coordinate all these activities and give me a credible report for a serious action to take place and for others to learn from it. Make sure you produce those amongst you that have no job, who have no cattle to rear. Rather, they're just moving around trying to cause crime. So that you don't give yourselves bad names. If you don't expose them and you harbor them, you shield them, you cover them, they'll continue to give you bad names. He used the opportunity to appeal to the people of Okemi to allow peace reign in the process of deciding who becomes the chief imam of the Asian city's central mosque. I have directed and I have ordered that the imamship is still very vacant, the time is not ripe enough, the situation is very tense, we cannot go into selecting or electing a new imam at this point. We are not going to allow anybody to bring any form of insecurity and disharmony in our hands or to us. And as such, the current naive still remain the acting imam while we take decision in the near future as to who will ascend to the position of chief imam of Iberaland. That position I maintain and I stand. Governor Bello said the security of persons and their property remains his administration's priority. If you are just joining us, this is Kogi in Focus, the program that keeps you up to speed on developments and happenings in and around Kogi, Nigeria's confluent state. For your contributions, feedback, comments, sponsorship and advert placements, please reach us through phone numbers and social media handles and websites displayed on your screen.
Kogi State's governor, Yaya Belo, says his government enjoys a smooth working relationship with the state, contrary to stories making the round in some quarters. Governor Belo said this in Lokoja, the state's capital, while swearing in the new Grand Kadi of the state Sharia Court of Appeal, Justice Abdul Karim Arua. The governor said his administration bears no ill feelings against any person or institution, adding that with the judicial workers' strike now over, government is still waiting for the authentic payroll to commence the payment of the outstanding salaries. The other issues bordering on financial impropriety within the judiciary, which has created some tensions, I'm also confident that the truth will prevail at the end of the day. We are already looking forward to a resolution by the NGC soon. We have also published how we utilize those funds in national days. Let me assure our workers that even without assessing the remaining 30.8 billion outstanding, we are working hard to clear every arrears by December this year. Bailu promised to complete the ongoing construction of the court's permanent site as well as boost its multi subvention and this, he said, would come after the biometric and data capture of the judiciary staff. He charged the new head of the state Sharia court to discharge his duties without fear or favor. Charge him to execute all the functions of his office with erudition and fear of Almighty Allah. The new Grand Kadi of the Sharia Court of Appeal said he was grateful to God for his elevation and lauded Governor Bailu for approving his appointment. My Excellency, profound gratitude for fulfilling your constitutional responsibility, kindly, speedily in appointing me and for sealing the appointment with this ceremony. A very clearly historic, epochal, and gratifying. I thank Your Excellency and present the court. You have appointed me to live as a stunted child that needs your fatherly attention and nurturing, and it is gratifying indeed. I similarly thank you, Chief, the Honorable Chief George. Justice Arua, who was appointed on the 13th May 2019, replaces Justice Zakaria Idakoji, who retired recently. The Kogi State Government has approved the employment of scores of youths into the State Information Institution. Director General Information and Grassensization, Abdul Malik Abdul Karim, who briefed journalists after the State Executive Council meeting, said it became imperative to engage graduates and professionals to ensure a vibrant press in the state. The council had approved the recruitment of about 100, about 100 uh, employees. We posted the key areas such as the state printing operation of the publishers of the graphic newspaper, the state broadcasting operation, owners of uh, Radio Kogi, the government press, as well as the information officers at the headquarters of the state bureau of information services and press sensitization. The council has also approved the procurement of generating sets to power the three booster stations to charge and be located, as well as uh, the transmission of quotas. With this development coming up, the business of ensuring adequate information and dissemination to every part of the state will be better enhanced. Also on the state ESCO's approval list is 100 million naira for social amenities and electrification of some communities in Kogi East. Commissioner of Rural Development Daniels 
O'Neill Ejibu said the approval is part of government's plan to make life better for rural dwellers. The contract was awarded by the provision of borehole at Command Army Record, National Orientation Agency, Atta of Igalas Palace, Ikabo, and Emery communities, respectively. The contract was awarded to Piston Construction, Integrated Multi-Lease, and then to provide um, transformers for Atta Igalas Palace. Ikago, Emiri communities, and step down on transformers at Kogi State Civil Service Commission, GRA Ida, aberration for the overhauling of the heavy duty equipment, and the project is expected to be completed as quick as possible. The federal government, through the office of the Secretary to the Government, of the Federation has launched an erosion management program across Kogi East. The official flag of and handover of the Memorandum of, of Understanding to contractor was made by the Minister of State for Labour, Stephen Ocheni, and the Secretary to the, to the Kogi State Government, Ayade for Lashade, at Sabongiri 1 in Dekina local government. Land degradation, flooding, and erosion are common phenomena that ravaged houses and land across Kogi East's Nitoria zone. Amongst the worst heat local governments is Tekina. One Sabongiri one. One government to assist us. This erosion is getting worse. We have lost two houses in Sabongiri one. Yeah. So if government may assist us to help us to do this thing, we'll be very grateful. What is happening today truly represents development that we'll be hearing from. Erosion had been part and parcel of the Kina local government. And just within a month, within a year, he had been able to uh, at least assist the community for erosion control. I think it's a good one at least. The people out there who had negative information should be able, this should get to them. Kina has been suffering from this particular erosion menace. And equally, I thank God that this is happening in the era of the new direction agenda of His Excellency Alaya Dozabello. Minister of State for Labor and Productivity Stephen Ocheni said moves to tackle the erosion affected areas will begin immediately. That I personally took a special interest in this problem. Made my submission to the federal government on behalf of this community and I wish to inform you that today is the day that God has answered our prayers and the cries of this community. And I want to inform you too that the government is not unaware of various ecological problems facing various communities spread over different local governments of Kogi State. And these are being addressed in phases. So I'm assuring you that the takeoff of this federal government project today is the beginning of it for us in Kogi State. The traditional ruler of Dakina, His Royal Highness, Ejie of Dakina, Usman Obaje expressed delight over the federal government's gesture. Apart from recognizing God's wonderful attention to this community, we also wish to appreciate His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari and his federal government for approving the site of the project here. The community is grateful and will continue to support his government. The Secretary to the State Government, Ayo Adi Folashade, assured the contractor of adequate support, while the Minister of Labor called on the traditional leaders and residents to ensure that work on the site progresses smoothly. There are other local government areas that were, that were submitted for the control, but the Kina is taking the lead. It's taking the lead not just because it's the largest local government, but because of the concern of the erosion and flood in the Kina. And I want to assure you that everything will be in order. I employ the traditional ruler of this, the first paramount chief of this local government, our first class chief, who is also the chairman of the Kina Traditional Council, the judge of the Kina, His Royal Highness, and Haji Yusman of Ajay, and his able chief to ensure a rock free environment. 
to enable the contractors from the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to complete this project on schedule. The project and contract signed by the Secretary to the Government of Federation, Boss Mustafa, will cover the management of land degradation caused by erosion across Kogi East. The topography of the area will be intensively surveyed and its management is executed through the Federal Government's Ecological Fund. Over 5,000 graduates from this year's convocation of the Federal Polytechnic IDA have been told to be worthy ambassadors of the institution and shown confrontational acts capable of derailing their progress. The advice was given by guest speakers, including a representative of the Minister of Education at the 24th Combined Convocation Ceremony of the school in Ida, Kogi State. The minister's representative, Elizabeth Adedigba, highlighted the importance of technical and vocational education offered by polytechnics in the economic empowerment of any nation and the importance of the federal government attaches to it. Government shall therefore not rise on its own towards repositioning education to the attainment of the point they are national development. To achieve this, government has and will continue to invest on education through its various intervention projects by tertiary education trust fund, tech fund and petroleum technology development fund, PTDA. The polytechnics therefore have to live up to their mandates and be responsible to the challenges of nation building. The director of the Federal Polytechnic, Ida, Baba David Danjema, said the institution's management has put structures in place to improve on existing infrastructure and facilities to enhance effective teaching and learning. He advised graduates to be good ambassadors of the school. I want to state here that even though we have achieved a lot, more is still desiring to be done. We have also addressed acts of indiscipline and other antisocial activities on campus. The training you have had is a training that will make you to be wealth creators and job creators, not job seekers. The school management conferred honorary fellowships on the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Professor Stephen Ocheni, National Women Chairperson of the All Progressives Congress APC, Salamatu Beiwa Omar Eluma, and the Catholic Bishop of Shokoto Diocese. Matu Hassan Kuka, who expressed delight at the honor bestowed on them. I never knew that the little things I was doing would attract a mighty team. But again, it is good to encourage people to contribute to the growth of the polytechnic. Because the federal government alone cannot provide all it takes to run higher institutions. Communities that are privileged to host this educational institution to also collaborate with government, support the government in one way or the other to sustain the academic progress and integrity of the protest. I'm very, very happy that my modest achievements and contribution, you know, to the, yeah, to the school and then to humanity is being, uh, are being recognized here and they're being rewarded. I'm happy. And this to show that we now have a new generation of priests and pastors and nuns that are not just domesticated to the food, but to make contribution to the development of the site. So on behalf of Bishop Kuka, we are really very excited for this award. These notable Nigerians are being conferred with the Institution Fellowship Awards in recognition of their valuable contributions to the socio-economic and political development of our dear nation. It is our hope and prayer that this conferment will spur them into contributing more meaningfully to our growth and development. Some of the graduates who demonstrated their research work spoke on what graduation means to them. The Federal Polytechnic has trained us 
to be able to create jobs rather than job seekers. So to the glory of God, with the experience, with the knowledge I have from this place, going out there, I'll be able to put one or two things together and help my life and family as time goes on. I'm so grateful that today I graduated from this Federal Polytechnic. To make the larger society a better place for me. To make people know that education is the best. Just the best is what is expected of me. You know, the Polytechnic has trained me for four years and I'm ready for the outer world. Present at the event is His Royal Majesty, Ame Michael Oboni II, the Atta Igala. He also commented. Applied learning tutorials, all the ways were shown to succeed. But in all of them, try to be honest in your daily. There is no shortcut to anything, to anything in this world, no shortcut to it. Avoid that and the sky will be a second point. The convocation was more than just an academic ceremony, spiced up with different forms of entertainment. The state government has dismissed rumors making the rounds that the Confluence Rice project as a hoax. The Commissioner for Agriculture, Olori Toba Kendi, who briefed journalists during an inspection visit at, of work done at the site located at Omi Dam in Kogi West, said the rice project is part of the state's ongoing efforts at getting youth off the streets. It's massive. We've not had something like this since the creation of the state. We now have a project that we can bequeath, even to the incoming generation. This project will outlive this administration. The consultant in charge of the rice mill, Amadine Director, Agri Integrated Service Africa Limited, Shegun Ololade, said the over 800 hectares cultivated is evidence that Omi Dam confluent rice is real. In the parboiling section, which is uh, basically completed, We've also seen the boiler section, which is uh, around 60% uh, uh, completion. And uh, behind me, you can also see the biomass uh, gasification plant, which is a biomass uh, generator, which is uh, sitting here in the uh, container. We, we, we plan to complete this site by the end of this month, which I know that is possible. He said stories making the round that the rice project has been abandoned are not true. Wasting your time on platforms, on social media, you, I, I, for me as a youth, I don't think that's the way forward for us youths. If you've been fed an information, I believe you should try and do your research properly before you speak about it. So that that way we can, together we can move Nigeria forward. I think moving Nigeria forward is getting the right information and passing the right information rather than passing uh, fake news. The Kogi Rice Mill project was conceived by the IAP yeah, Baylor administration and is set to officially begin business in June 2019. Over 20 tons of paddy rice have been harvested and waiting for processing. It's now time for this week's views from the streets. President Muhammad Buhari was sworn in for a second term of office last week after his victory at the 2019 presidential election. Many Nigerians have expressed their expectations from Buhari re-election and they went to the streets to capture some of them. Your own My own expectation is uh, 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 for the real. I am sure uh, 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 the local government autonomous comes to stay, judicial autonomous comes to stay, minimum wage has to be enforced. And uh, equally, I am looking at uh, 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 price control. Price control of goods and services has to come and stay. Uh, the issue of uh, revoke of uh, licenses, gun licenses, should, should come and stay. We, I will support it. I am in support of that fully. In, in the previous administration, you were able to tackle insecurity. The level of corruption has reduced to the minimal level. This present administration, I want him to put more emphasis on unemployment. Our youth are suffering. 
graduate are driving Okada, pushing Will Byron. It will not go away with us if it, such things continue like that. Yeah, we are very happy for his uh, second time uh, coming. We love him because of all he's doing. And uh, personally, me, I appreciate his coming because I like all his effort he put on. His first time. And uh, he's coming back this time. We expect him to do better than the, his first tenure. We expect him. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, now we expect him on an on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, a power and a, a power and a, a power and a supply. I want him to help him to do good. Hospital should pay the workers, and we students we need work. When we finish from school, we don't have a job, and that's what I'm lacking of in Nigeria now. Uh, we thank Almighty Allah again for the successful of uh, his inauguration. At the same time, we hope to see better men from most especially security aspects. He has tried his best. We expect him to do more. This is our draw the curtain on this edition of Kogain Focus. Join me for what promises to be another interesting package on this station same time next week. And don't forget to keep doing to others what you want them to do to you. I'm Oluwa Tosin Suji. Bye for now.